Hello and welcome to Webpiano Academy and to this uh, Let's Talk About Music. Uh, uh, today, my guest uh, is uh, Broha and she's a piano teacher based in Manchester in the UK. Uh, and uh, she's, uh, she has a, an awesome experience uh, that she will share with us about uh, how she uses social media to leverage uh, her knowledge uh, uh, especially during the pandemic. So well, well, we'll welcome Broha. Hi. Hi. Wow. So um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about your background first and then mm -hmm. uh, we can just uh, start talking about uh, what you do and how, what your experience was. Yeah, so I'm classically trained, but as I got older, I actually started moving more to pop music mm -hmm. so pop piano but I am classically trained right. um, so now I have that like mixture of both um, and yes I've been teaching for a while and um, really enjoy teaching and playing and it's a big part of my life right so what happened to, yeah you were telling me what happened during the pandemic right so that uh, yeah. Basically, yeah yeah so um, so I had my studio in Manchester and I worked really hard to build it up. Um, mainly, it was mainly by word of mouth. But well, I think I think it is just like sort of a, a, an average of one full day per year of teaching, right? That it takes to build a full studio, right? You know, the the yeah. more you stay in a place, the more students you have, but it takes yeah. so long, right, to, to fill up. Exactly, yeah. 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 So it, it didn't take too long, but I worked very, very hard, like, because I got most of my students word of mouth. And also the reason right. I filled up so quickly was because I had like basically 100% retention rates, like, mm -hmm probably at a hundred percent like people really didn't leave um unless they like went like moved or something right. um so i but the thing is i worked really really hard you know to like build my name in the area and like really like really like show up 100 percent for every single student and like i worked really really hard to do that and i was all going well and but then yeah <laughs> the pandemic happened and um from one day to the next like boom <laughs> so um yeah it was just awful like it really was you know I'd worked just so hard like it just I mean got... many of my my not my own students because I had a different setting uh, for mm -hmm. my own studio but uh, I heard many of my colleagues who have lost uh, many of yeah. their students and they didn't they wouldn't they weren't able to teach students who were not uh, prepared to take online lessons uh, exactly and, exactly yeah. like none of my students wanted to take online like maybe one or two said yeah or something yeah and i think i also we didn't know uh you know la last year last year yeah. last year. <laughs> we didn't know exactly <laughs> it was last year uh, we yeah. didn't know exactly how long it is going to last so yeah. you know yeah, like we had no idea what was going on, right? Like music lessons was the last thing on people's mind. Like the kids were right. worried about school. Everyone was worried about everything. So like- and many, okay. many people have lost income. So I mean, how do you exactly. want to invest in music education if uh, you basically don't have any income coming, right? So- Exactly. So like, and also lots, so there was all those reasons. And then also like lots of my kids were very young. Lots right. of the kids teaching were very young. So online, like, they definitely went didn't want that so basically you none of my current students really wanted to go online right. so i was like okay um i didn't really know much about going online or teaching online like i really didn't never i, I never thought of doing it like really never thought right. and i saw on facebook and like the music in the piano teachers group saying like oh teach online and then do it with zoom and then do an overhead camera and i was like oh wow i didn't think of that okay so okay I found my like way out of this mess. Like, okay, there's hope now. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Like, <laughs> only I can do. Okay, I'll teach online, but where am I going to get students from? Right. Right. Yes. So, um, 
so I really hadn't been on social media a lot, but I was like, okay, um, now I can teach like anyone, anywhere in the world. Like, I don't need to just right. know really look cool. Let me see what I can do with social media. So I literally had no idea what I was doing and had no, I no, and didn't know anything about social media marketing at the time. I, I knew about, you know, general marketing, which is how I managed to like fill up my studio and different kind of things, but I had no idea about social media marketing. Right. And, um, and I just tried like a million different things and, and some of them worked and I started getting students and I was like, whoa, what on earth is this wizardry? <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I think I it is a little bit it's very it is very similar right uh, to how you would market uh, live but also yeah. very different uh, and exactly. so it's very similar so i did have i i had been teaching for a while and i knew what i knew somewhat what i needed to do to get students but right. like you said it's very different but i think the key is is that i tried lots of things and then um yeah. it still took me a while to figure it out but at the time, I was like, what on earth is this wizardry that I'm just, like, getting these students from, like, social media? What? Just mm -hmm. by like, doing a couple of things, like, posting. And, like, it wasn't running ads or some complicated stuff. I was literally just – and um, I was like, obviously, I knew people got clients on social media. And I knew people that was influencers selling stuff. And I knew all that kind of thing. Right. But I really never thought I'd be able to do it. I thought, like, you had to be, like – it is also very specific, I think, you know, uh, one thing is be being a lifestyle influencer and then you have exactly. all this audience and, and anybody yeah. can be interested in lifestyle, right? <laughs> or kind exactly. of, I don't know. Exactly. And the piano is, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I started, the thing was, I started really looking into like the, the typical Instagram device and I found it really didn't apply so much for music like music was a whole different ball game so I was like okay. okay what they're saying is not working like I'm just gonna have to try my own stuff and um so I did all these different things and then and then I, I did keep getting students but the problem was for the longest time um I just felt like it was a complete fluke every time I got a student and like this was the last time someone would buy from me like it's just a fluke I just got lucky and so I just had this fear because even though it was nice to get people, it didn't feel predictable at all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Well, I think yeah. I think it is a uh, very common to have that fear because we yeah. still don't have. Uh, whenever you try something new, you still don't have the right audience, maybe, and uh, yeah. you, you kind of are still trying to figure out uh, what it what it is working, what's not working, as well. exactly. and then you, you think like, oh. Uh, for example, in this channel, one, one subscriber is like, wow, <laughs> right? One subscriber. Maybe there are people are getting thousands of subscribers a day, yeah. right? And they don't really care. But, uh, you know, I, for a, when you're starting for a small channel or yeah. for uh, even on Instagram, right? Is somebody yeah. kind of uh, uh, acting uh, or kind of taking actions on what you're posting, it's kind of still a big deal when you're starting, right? Yeah. yeah for sure um but so yeah so like like you said like um you, you know when you're starting like you don't really know and everything and I just felt very lucky that I was getting students on social media but it didn't feel predictable so then basically I took a really good look at it and I was like okay like how does this work and then basically I managed to like really look at what happened, look at what I'm doing, look at what other people are doing, look at where all my sales came from, look at where my students came from, how they found me, how um, anything. And I really put it together and then I kind of put it into this like three step um, like system that feels like a whole lot more predictable. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's what I have now. And basically just very quickly is that is that the three steps are content, community, and conversations. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that a huge, a huge, huge problem is that a lot of people, they focus too much on the content. But right. when you're a small creator, the algorithm is not very nice to you. And not really anyone's going to see it unless you're like some like magic um, Instagram wizard that you can post like six posts a day, like amazing yeah. pop top quality posts. <laughs> Then, like people are not going to see which stuff. takes a lot of time right? i don't i don't know if i post something it's it's like, it takes it's one hour or something all day all right day. right <laughs> so basically you can't do that right 
So right. when you're a small creator, when you're starting out, or then um, people, you can content is only a third of it content is only one part you need two more parts as well content is very important and it, you want to have the right content strategy so you actually turn people into buyers but how do you get people in the first place to see is by community right. and conversations and then when I looked um on set <laughs> when I looked back at what worked for me I realized that most of the things happened from the content yes but also from um, you know, just engaging and networking with people very genuinely and very much out of a curious way. Like I was just curious, like how does this work? Like, right. you know, like how do this does this work with connecting with people? And because obviously I'd used Instagram on a very basic level before, but yeah. I wasn't on it a lot. I mean, like, uh, even my Instagram uh, account, or the same one that I'm using uh, now, yeah. and then I deleted, I deleted many of the posts that I had before because yeah. it was like, a, I don't know, my food, my outings, exactly. you know, my dog, <laughs> my kids, <laughs> all those things were not related to what I do. Uh, so I was a little bit exactly, uh, exactly yes. like you can use Instagram on a basic level, but then using it as like an integral part of your business and and yes. your main um your main way of getting students is like a whole different thing right yeah so, it, it takes uh, a lot of work though i mean it gives results but it takes a lot yeah. of work and you so, have to really engage uh, properly with yeah with, so with the thing is audience, it does yes. take work it does take work but if you think about it if there was something you could do that would give you a predictable stream of students of course sales of anything you want to sell of Right. See, and and your business needs sales for it to not be a hobby for it to be a business as musicians I think we can feel that yeah. right right so if that the you know if there was such a thing that could literally you know give make all your dreams come true would you spend an hour a day on it obviously right. yeah. yeah and that is yeah. social media would you would you make sure you're doing it properly yeah you would you know yes yeah, and right. and I saw that it just has such amazing potential and then um and and by doing these three things like um the content community and conversations I was able to fill up my studio to to launch have a successful piano course launch to to do like so many things right yeah so basically you suggest uh, you know if I would have uh, not only no, not only it's not totally for piano teaching, it's basically for any kind of business, right? Exactly. Uh, so would you create a content which is interesting or related to yeah. your business or even just like, you know, curiosities about things yeah. that you might find uh, relate to your business, then you'd need to create a community of people interested in that exactly. particular because... aspect. Yes. And, yeah. then, and, then, and, then, and then create a conversation with those people so that you have a connection. Mm -hmm. So so connection exactly. to that. Yeah. So I mean, you know, if you, I would just pass content well, whenever I don't have time, and I notice too that whenever I don't really have time because I'm teaching the entire day and I just post something, right? But I don't engage, uh, not even with the comments mm -hmm. at times because I really don't look at that. Uh, just like uh, <laughs> the, the 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 engagement in my accounts just yeah all, right yes. Exactly. And you just like don't find yourself connecting to your audience and understanding your audience, understanding what they want, what they're looking for, how you can help them. Do you know what I mean? When you have conversations and you build your community, what I mean by community generally is like your target market. And conversation is so important to keep in touch with the audience and to keep the connection going and understand what they want so you can create content based on that or products or services based on that but um community is really important because you want to get really specific about who your who your target market is and on social media or on youtube you know your niche is really important because if you don't have a clearly defined niche especially now when it's so much when it's such a busy busy online world right. yeah. you really want to make sure you speak into a certain kind of person so you can find them they can find you and you can build a community of the right kind of people because right. otherwise you'll just feel like where do I go where do I look who I'm right. speaking to you so you should have a basic a, a basic avatar of your ideal yeah. uh yeah you know the ideal uh, um member of your community and then exactly. speak to this avatar right yeah. 
exactly you do want to have an idea of that because because otherwise yeah you can just get completely lost you know yeah. there's there's hundreds and thousands of piano teachers online there's hundreds of thousands of piano channels so i'm just saying piano as an example right yeah so if you don't want to get completely lost you have to be you know um you have to you have to be specific you have to build a community of people that like let's say so there's a couple of ways you can niche down one is niching down to your network so let's say local people or people your age group but people that have some sort of connection with you some some think similar so they will resonate more with you yeah. so let's say one of my clients she's she's like um, she's almost retired so we're like her target market is also retirees because could be that retirees just don't feel um good connection with like the young piano teachers and they're not right. teaching songs they like right so let's say that's her target market another one of my clients her target market is um voice students that want to like nail their auditions and get good roles and get into like the academy they want without you know failing the auditions so that's her target market so there's there's lots of different ways so it can be a niche or a target market community yeah. or the same thing um of like a certain level or certain skill or can be a lot more simple than that like um, another one of my clients he's doing um, a Dutch program so like specifically in Dutch so um, there could be a lot of other courses like his but because his is in Dutch it will resonate right. with people from Holland right yes yeah. so there's lots of ways you can niche down but it's so incredibly important and it's definitely one of those things I wish I could go back in time and tell myself to do yeah um, I, I think uh, I think right now people are more I think because of the pandemic, uh, yeah. also uh, many people are, are more willing uh, to use online tools uh, to yeah. learn new things because they, we experienced exactly. that we were forced to experience that. Exactly. exactly. So, and as, as a teacher, I know that um, I needed to change certain things because teaching online teaching online means that I have to gain the attention of the students in a yeah, different exactly. way. So while I, I could use eye-to-eye -eye contact while we are in a live lesson, I cannot do that online unless they're really watching the video, right? <laughs> or they're watching the camera. Exactly. Um, so it was very difficult for me. And then I had to narrow down specifically certain goals that I wanted to reach with my students and to exactly. um, really kind of teach shorter sections so that they yeah. were uh, very clear and then the students uh, had some disadvantages but uh, they also had a lot of advantages exactly so it's win-win it's yeah. a big advantage for the student as well when you narrow down so for example if you're narrowed down to let's say a specific genre of music right then you're not just teaching any kind of piano that each different student wants but let's say right. from the student's perspective if they go for teacher that goes for a certain kind of genre or something or certain anything then um, they have a much better experience, they enjoy it more, they, they reach their goals, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, and the same for student, when they're looking online, when a teacher posts good content and engages and builds a community, they give their students who are looking for them a chance to find them. Do you know what right. I mean? Yeah. So as as um if I would be a student, right? And I, yeah. I have no idea from where to start learning anything because I don't even have an idea about what I really want, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the students they want to play piano, but they don't really know exactly for what reason or what, what kind of uh, genre they want to play or mm -hmm. how how much time that would you know, uh, would uh, take them out, you know, yeah. the kind of uh, daily life and so on. So how would you uh, decide, uh, you know, just like, okay, so Antonella is, uh, the, uh, you know, a good fit for me, or this other class is a good fit for me, or this yeah. other teacher is a good fit for me. Well, how, how would you distinguish that? So what kind of suggestion would you, based on social, you know, social yeah. media contents? Uh, yeah. yeah so that's a really really good question and yeah so let's say you're looking on social media for teacher which first of all is an amazing way to look because you have the chance to get to know someone before you sign up with them right. um instead of it just being a random teacher that 
from like a website you know yes like this these like websites um if it's a personal website you can also get to know them a bit from their website but what I'm saying is social media is a really really great place to find the right teacher for you so when you're looking for a teacher you want to make sure that they're the kind of teacher that you want so for example if you are a very serious student and you want to go you want to like become a concert pianist or you want to just really reach the highest levels you want to make sure you find a teacher who is very serious and has and has a lot of you know um credibility and musicianship and social proof right yes because you have to make sure they are you know they (laughs) are Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I mean, well, you can't really, I, I think it is the same for everything, but you can't really, uh, I mean, even if you want to be a chef and um, cook amazing exactly. <laughs> uh, food, yeah. uh, you can't really learn uh, a lot from somebody who cannot cook anything. So, exactly. know, that's, that's exactly. yeah. Yeah. let's say then qualification is extremely important. Yeah. But let's say, I mean, obviously it always is, but let's say you want um, a teacher, you just want to like be able to just sit down play a few of your favorite songs from the 80s then what you want to do is find a teacher that does that that they don't say oh you need to practice for hours a day or you can't learn or right. like um I only teach classical or I only teach jazz because that's fine but if you want to learn something from the 80s you can find a teacher that does that right. that's the beauty of social media is that you can find the right teacher for you right so you want to make sure you find a teacher that will actually help you reach your goals and not like the wrong uh, the wrong teacher who's not for your goals and then you just get frustrated and you'll give up and that's like a huge shame right right? yes yeah and even even at times even uh, changing teachers uh, can be difficult because then you have to kind of readjust you know and then it's better to really kind of look uh, um at the right teacher before or really well uh, uh, what you want right so if you really want just to uh you know spend some time playing the piano and maybe the other teacher expect the teacher expects you to practice a lot that's really yeah kind of and it's just um you would love to practice a lot just can't possibly fit into your life yeah. Yeah. then you want to find a teacher who's you know, that teacher might be right for someone that, that needs someone very strict so they can get to to yeah. a extremely high level, but it won't necessarily be right for someone, and a regular person, kind of not a musician, um, who wants to just um, play jazz, some jazz songs, let's say, or right. um, some songs from the 90s, or just yeah. about so yeah you do want to meet with social media the student really has a chance to find the right teacher for them instead of just going for a random teacher um so they can really have the best experience and as a teacher we have a we have the opportunity with our content to call out our dear student and to give them the opportunity to find us in the first place Right. right. I, I read uh, your website, uh, you know, your Piano Accelerator yeah. website where you offer, um, you know, online course for a specific uh, target of students. Exactly. So how, how do you uh, come up with this, uh, you know, uh, with your avatar for that particular yeah. course? So, for example, my avatar for that was very specific. Like, even though I trained classically and, you know, theory and all different things, um, this was not that. This was just basic pop songs for people that don't have a lot of time to practice, um, but still really want to enjoy playing music. They don't need to have to learn the sheet music. And it's not that they can't learn that as well, but they just maybe don't have the time or they, you know, they just want to be able to just play a few chords and a few styles and right. work on their rhythm and um so yeah it's very very specific and and my content and my website it really qualifies the right students for my course and um it doesn't it doesn't limit the people the amount of people that can join in fact it expands it because it means exactly the right people come in which means they get much better results which means the community grows which means they do really well um right. because with my content with my social media content i call in the right people the right people can find me 
and the same with my my red side is just an extension of that right right so yeah. um and I was only able to do that because now I have now I can reach anyone in the world like I would I don't think I would have been able to be so specific when I was teaching locally because then I was ready narrow down you know when you're teaching locally you're ready narrow down to your area Right, so you're limited by that. I mean, yeah. yeah. So that's why online you need to consciously niche down. Right, yes. Because, I mean, you yeah. have uh, how many billion people that exactly. could potentially yeah. join and exactly. learn piano, right? Yeah. Are you supposed to speak to the right person if you're trying to speak to like, Eight yeah. billion people in the world, right? right. So, but uh, so uh, uh, when I was sort of searching for one of the videos on this on this channel, yeah. I was um, uh, I made a video specific for Hannon uh, the virtuoso pianist. Yeah. And uh, what 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 I found out about this exercise is that it, it was a marketing strategy at the end because by naming mm. just by naming the book. You know, an exercise book, not like listed, not like Bramstead, that they named that exercise books, right? So, so he named it the virtuoso pianist. He kind of copied and pasted some exercises so that, to, you know, you could put that together in a book. Mm -hmm. And as a publisher, he wanted just to sell it, right? So that was mm -hmm. his goal. And now that book is, you know, basically sold everywhere in the world uh, yeah. since, uh, what, a century two, right? <laughs> Almost two, uh, you know, not two centuries, but it was published in 1878. Oh, so yeah. he marketed that uh, in the right way by naming these exercises, uh, not as exercises, but they were towards the piano. So that would yeah. just, that title was pick it's only like two, those, right. So, yeah. and obviously, so I remember, uh, you I said, book, you'll become a virtuoso piano. piano. Yeah. So I remember when I bought that book, uh, when I was a kid, uh, you know, they told me to buy that book and I said, wow, I'm going to become a virtuoso what? pianist, right? It's mm -hmm. amazing. So I was so excited about the title. So I didn't know what the exercises were about, but I thought, well, okay, mm -hmm. it's called a virtuoso pianist. It means that if I train with these exercises, then I would become a virtuoso pianist. And I yes. know that uh, that book is very popular in Russia, obviously, because everybody w wants to be a virtuoso pianist or kind of, you know, in yeah. every part of the world. And it was a marketing strategy, right? He kind yeah. of in name so down the, is, the title. Yeah. The thing is, is that, especially as music teachers or the thing is mark what a big thing i discovered and sometimes only very recently is that at the beginning i found it really hard to market myself properly but as i started getting a few students specifically in my course because it's not one-to-one -one, so it's a bit right. of a different energy right yeah. um i found it so hard to market it but once i started having a few students coming in and getting results and absolutely loving it then i realized that the right marketing is truly a thing of service because at the end of the day, people are busy. You are the professional, you are the teacher, you don't, they don't know what they need. You yeah. need to, in your marketing, explain to them as clearly as possible what they what they can get what they need yeah. i mean we we often forget as uh, content creators that we are creating a, a product for a specific exactly. need a right so we have to yeah. fulfill a need like i mean i, I don't know like a, anything right that yeah. is created uh, by yeah. certain companies uh, so we create products too yeah. so which is like a, it, it is exactly. content it is education it is but still is a product that would have yeah. to kind of uh, satisfy certain need for a certain part of yeah. the population and that need might be i mean it doesn't mean that you can create a course for only kids who would like to play classical music or something yeah, else sure. but but you just limit the audience for that particular you know yeah, content so yeah exactly yeah. look you can you can do generalized courses you can and you mm -hmm. probably will gain traction but I don't know if you'll be able to deliver such a powerful result. Right. Um, but you know what? There's so many options. There's not really a, a you know, a yeah. fast rule. I just found right. that as a beginner in a very competitive online space, and it's going to get getting yeah. more and more. If you want to get like have a, a get like get hit the ground running and actually see results niching down is good and as musicians we hate niching down i'm literally like 
I'm literally so. It is a scary thing that. because we weren't taught to do that. Like so. you do so many things. Like yeah, don't yeah. don't. Yeah. Lose so I have a, so two like examples uh, on on YouTube. I have, for example, piano to uh, the that kind of piano channel they only teach yeah. uh, they teach sort of some classical pieces yeah. that are very famous but they are mostly specialized in pop songs and yeah. then they stone bass which is like only kind of classical music and then you you yeah. know if you so you can follow the one or the other one it's not that one is better than the other one it's just like exactly. they're different right they have different kind of uh, goals in mind or different kind of uh, um yeah so really exactly kind of, yeah. And, and look, you can be more general. I just find if you want to grow fast, if you want to not wait forever, if you niche down, it's way better. And then over time, you can expand. Oh, and even though I hated niching down, I hated it. I had to push myself again and again to, to go more and more specific and niche and everything. But it paid off. It really, really did. Like every time it was a struggle, it wasn't easy to niche down as a musician. Yeah. But it always paid off when I did. So, so right, you're coaching, something. you're coaching music teachers, right? Or yeah. Kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, and on really specifically on social media uh, marketing yeah. social media and, and course creation. And the reason I'm doing that is because I struggle so much because most of the information out there is not really specifically right, yeah. music courses. Kind of a different ball game. It's similar but different in a way that can just yeah. get you very confused and frustrated so once I kind of figured it out my piano course was going well but I just had this feeling I was like so so many talented music teachers like just in the same place that I was just like having incredible skills and talents but just don't know how to get it out there and yeah. share it with the world and I just had this like voice like telling me for so long like just like do that as well you can do social media and course creation coaching as well of course yeah um, and so I, I I was like, I'm a crazy, I worked so hard on my piano course. And like, now that's actually like working, I'm like, gonna like, like go on to something else. But I was like, okay, I'll do both. And I am doing both now. And, um, and I'm just so happy I did it because like my clients, my piano students are doing great. And my clients have really been seeing good results. Like they're getting students, they're creating mm -hmm. their courses. And I know that um, it's just really incredible to see what 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 like talented people can do when they have the opportunity to just share with the world what they have, you know. Yeah. So I will link uh, your kind of uh, information in yeah. the description uh, below the yeah. video, so that uh, if yeah. anybody is uh, is interested in uh, getting in touch with you for you know. Uh, course creations or kind of for yeah. social media marketing for specifically yeah. for music lessons so yeah. they can get in touch with you and then yeah we yeah. have the entire world <laughs> exactly. <laughs> literally yeah. yeah and um it's incredible it's an incredible opportunity just like take it take it seriously yes put the work in it will pay off like invest in it you know like take it you know just <laughs> that's all i can say yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah so thank you so much for, you for having me being my guest today and uh, yeah. so i hope we will kind of have something else uh in the yeah. future yeah, yeah. Um, and thank you um, so much for having me and see we met on social media yeah and it's, it's so nice <laughs> that we got to know each other like yeah i really like to uh, really kind of i really like to your kind of all, all your posts about you know how to uh, manage co yeah. content uh, on instagram and those things it was amazing yeah. inspirational to me so <laughs> yeah oh i'm so glad to and yeah it was just um yeah we met on then yeah okay thank so, you so so much for having me thank you very very much and have a nice day and uh, to the audience and i hope you like this video and uh if you need yeah, to get in touch it. with broha and uh, i yeah. will link uh, her information in the description below and yeah. i love you bye, <laughs> bye. So see you bye bye